the deadliest issue in the history of the world. Episode 4 Legal Aspect and Conclusion From a law perspective, someone is clearly at fault for knowingly misrepresenting nutrition facts, which is not only for informational purposes, but is for marketing purposes as well. Congress originally enacted the Lanham Act, including Section 43A, which was codified at 15 U.S.C. Section 1125A in 1946 and amended it in 1988. This provision prohibits any use of a false or misleading description or representation in commercial advertising or promotion that misrepresents the nature, characteristics, qualities, or geographic origin of goods, services, or commercial activities. Courts have formulated the following elements for a claim under Section 43A. United Industries Corporation v. Clorox Company, 1998. The defendant must have made a false or misleading statement of fact in advertising. This is one nonillion percent satisfied as an element. They are objectively lying about the nutrition facts and are well beyond misleading people. The word fact will be argued over to figure out what it means, but it won't be enough to stop common law from expanding the definition if it needs to, and it probably won't have to, as at the top of the nutrition label it reads nutrition facts. That statement must have actually deceived or had the capacity to deceive a substantial segment of the audience. Um, how about knowingly deceiving the entire world with a lie almost every scientist with a brain cell in their head has acknowledged? The deception must have been material in that it was likely to influence the purchasing decision. Between the packaging which for example might say heart healthy with a heart logo when there is no evidence to support it helps your heart health at all. There are hundreds of different examples of this. By me because I'm healthy packaging, whether team is healthy or not, and the fact that hundreds of millions of people every day rely on nutrition facts to make their purchases. My previously stated doctor reliance on false packaging, etc. This element is one nonillion percent satisfied. The defendant must have caused its goods to enter interstate commerce. This is a given in many circumstances. It will be very easy to prove. One nonillion percent satisfied against companies who will then turn around and indemnify all the alphabet boys mentioned earlier. Well, it's not our fault. It's the FDA's or not us. It's the government's fault or we aren't the businesses who chose not to disclose their scientific findings, etc. The plaintiff must have been or is likely to be injured as a result. Much death, much pain and suffering, both physical and emotional, much disease and general negative health effects have happened to millions of people all over the world. It is against the government who makes everything harder to prove against them. But yes, this element is one nonillion percent satisfied. Example, if you a generally healthy fat person who reads nutrition labels and makes eating decisions based on them, wouldn't you say being lied to about how much you're actually consuming made it even just that much more likely you would be injured by weight? and overconsumption, or that it flat out injured you? Most people would say yes. If everyone processes food differently, then we should not be telling people the number of calories food will provide to them at all. We should instead be trying to help people understand that their processing may be different than others and therefore they should be doing their own experimentation and calculation to what foods make them gain or lose weight. 
But if we change from the Atwater system to bomb calorimetry, or at least create a more accurate quotient for people to use, it would save millions of lives and allow people who cannot perform these tests on themselves and cannot afford to pay a nutritionist or other doctor thousands of dollars to do it for them. A radical change to the asinine labeling system now would allow for us to make very small changes in the future, which would help with stability. A more extensive general factor system has been derived to include organic acids used in food preservation, as called bomb calorimetry. The study in 2011 used it, as the results cited gross energy content determined by bomb calorimetry. It really just depends how you look at. If you say that food was eaten by a human, recent science would have you believe it would have more energy than the raw version. This is the way scientists have been approaching the problem. That humans have evolved to derive more nutrients from cooked food over raw food does not help an individual staring at incorrect nutrition facts whether they cook the food or not whether they mash the food first or not, and this is especially true if the consumer does not know how to apply the correct calorie amount to their situation. The calorie must be even more flawed than we thought and essentially a completely inaccurate measurement. Either that or jowls are incorrect, but I think we know who the culprit is here. Calories. Therefore, we need a new unit of measurement altogether, or to at least buy a scientific equation to get more accurate packaging. Just because we cannot tell individuals what their personal energy consumption will be, does not mean we should give up trying. I believe within the next 10 to 15 years, we could derive at the very least an app but preferably a legislative system, which would allow a person who wants to know a specific food's specific energy density at a specific time and under specific circumstances to be able to do that, while also providing people who do not care about the label as much a broader, but still accurate resource to figure out their food needs if they choose to. I wish I had a more dramatic ending for you, but let's just hope the labeling crisis has a swift and smooth resolution. Then I can make an updated series about the new labeling practices. Until then, I guess we are stuck with the deadliest issue in the history of the world. Content Binger thanks you for listening to the series and we hope you check out more of our content on YouTube or at contentbinger.com.